in this video um, I'm gonna hopefully help you give you a few pointers to improve your uh, central heating control it, uh, save you some money um, and go through the project which I'm doing in my house so I've been in this house about 18 months now I kind of got used to how the heating worked last winter this winter and with the advent of gas going up I decided to do some upgrades and I've done a couple of upgrades over the last year as well which I'll tell you about so here's a list of the main things that you can do to improve or upgrade your central heating okay so first off sort any leaky doors or windows so UPVC doors and windows with worn hinges rubbers that no longer you know seal try and sort them out because that is your that's the first thing you need to do really there's no point doing everything else that we're doing in this video if you've got leaky doors and windows so sort them out sort any drafts the second thing that you want to do is is start getting used to closing doors of rooms around your house okay instead of le leaving doors wide open when it when especially when it's really cold there's no point taking control of your central heating and taking control of the heat in different rooms if you're going to leave doors open you're going to end up with a temperature gradient between rooms and that's the best way to control your heating loft insulation that is the next one that you can get the most benefit from and you need to be looking at getting at least 200 mil of loft insulation in your loft okay and if you have loft boards try to put them on stilts because there are no rafters that are 200 mil deep the insulation will come above the rafters so you can buy stilts to put loft boards on for storage if you press down the loft insulation it's no longer insulation when you compress loft insulation it conducts heat and that's no good and um, the next big benefit and part of what we're doing in this video is change old radiators old radiators are not as good um, at convecting heat and they hold a lot of water you want the least amount of water possible in your heating system modern radiators are very very efficient very good at giving off heat they are I've read that they were between 30 and 50 percent more efficient now than they were in the year 2000 and the year 2000 doesn't seem like that long ago fit TRVs now most people have got TRVs on the radiators but I bet if you go around and look at all yours now they're all set on five or six so you're basically heating up all your radiators all your rooms to maximum all the time your heating's on rooms that you don't use or don't live in right there's no point having the heating on high in those rooms so for instance a hall radiator you only want to set that trv onto two or three a bedroom that you're not using during the day set that to two or three turn it up to four in the evening or four and a half when you're going to go to bed you should not have trvs on radiators where your room stay is so the next thing that you can do is lower your boiler temperature um, if we change the radiators for more efficient ones we can lower the temperature of the water that we put into them because they will be giving off more heat. I've lowered my boiler temperature from 75 to 60 and the radiators, they still get as hot. You know, you can't really bear your hands on 60 degrees for long. This is quite a new condensing boiler. If the return water temperature is too high, the boiler is not condensing and therefore it's not as efficient. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. A condensing boiler, can be about 94% efficient but if it's not condensing it's only as efficient as an old combi who paid to have a condensing boiler installed so the return temperature needs to be around 50 55 at the most the next thing is fit a good control system I'm using Hive but there are other systems and I'm really pleased with Hive it learns how your house heats up and cools down and for example, you, I've seen it turning off my heating when the temperature is approaching the target. So say I set my target to 19 at about 18.8, 18.9. Now it switches the heating off. The heat approaches 19 and just kind of sits there. When it starts to see it going down, it will come on. And I've seen my heating maintain the temperature to within between 0.2 and 0.4 degrees during the day and the last one on my list is lower the temperature of rooms not used but we've already talked about that and the key thing with that is keeping doors closed so let's get into this video this video is is as a project that I've done in my house I've in total changed four radiators I've installed a hive system 
I've increased my loft uh, insulation to about 250 mil, something like that. I've lowered my boiler temperature. So let's get on with this video. I've got the Hive system on my central heating and I've had Hive now for I think about two years. I'm not going to go into this too much because um, it's not really a major part of this video. The more functionality they have, probably the less money they're going to save you because for instance with the Hive system you can operate it from your phone, you can operate it when you're away from home, you can you can change the temperature on your phone, change all the functionality of it on your phone, you can set it for a geolocation so that I think on the Hive system it just tells you if you are near or going away from your home as a reminder to turn your heating off whereas I think the Nest system will actually turn your heating on if you come within a certain if your phone becomes let's say within five miles of your home your heating will come on um, but for me I work shifts so I don't really use the schedule function because it would be I would have to program a different schedule every week I basically just use this in manual and I use it from my phone so it takes me about 35 minutes to get home from work so if I'm coming home from work I'll go on my phone before I go to the car and just put my heating on and when I get home I'm walking into a warm house and that is how I tend to use it and that's not necessarily going to give me massive savings so the hive system I have no issues with it at all I've been using it I think about three winters now moving on you've done your loft fix any uh, leaking doors and windows, creating drafts, things like that. Check for drafts coming under doors. The other thing which can make the biggest difference, and that's what we are going to be doing, mainly in this video, we've got this bad boy to fit in place of this. Okay, so this is an imperial radiator. I think it's 50 inches, which is about 1300 mil. When you're changing from uh, imperial radiators to metric radiators you're never going to be able to directly replace them. There's always going to be a difference in the width of the radiators and uh, these are quite good. These are called TRV extenders um, and basically this end screws into the radiator and then this end screws into your valve and you can cut these to length with a standard pipe cutter. The other way of doing it is to buy these and these screw into the radiator and you can get them in different lengths. This one I think is a 10 mil one. It extends your radiator by 10 millimeters and you can get, I think you can get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever you want. And they're usually available from decent plumbers merchants. What I'm gonna be using today is, is these and I'm gonna have one on each end. I need to bridge the gap by about 90 millimeters and I think these are uh, 100 millimeter ones so I'll be cutting these down. So this radiator, a single panel, single convector and the radiator that I've bought is a double panel, double convector. So there are four types of common, I say common radiator. They have different names depending on where you buy them from. So for instance, a type 11 from Wix is a single panel, single convector. That's probably the most common radiator and it's the slimmest radiator. Uh, the next one up is a type 21 and that is a double panel, single convector. And again, that's the next most common radiator. They're generally fitted where you want a little bit more heat output than a single panel would give you. Uh, obviously they stick out a little bit further from the wall but in my own opinion if you're going to fit a type 21 so a double panel you might as well fit a type 22 which is what this one is and it's double panel double convector because in a type 21 double panel single convector the second panel, you're not getting the maximum heat out of that panel. You might as well get the radiator with the convector on the panel, which is all the wiggly fins on the inside. And then you will get the maximum heat out of that radiator and from both panels. So the other theory of this, if, if you uh, are interested in this video and trying to save you some money, because gas prices are going up, 
this April 2022. And so if you've got old radiators in your house, it really is a good idea to get rid of them. Some houses have still got radiators in going back to the 70s. And the theory behind central heating systems then, it was thought that the more water you had in a system, the better. That water um, theory was behind latent heat in that once you'd heated up all that water, it was all around your house in the radiators and it would just constantly soak out the heat into the room. But the radiators weren't particularly good. Poor old boiler had got gallons and gallons and gallons of water to heat up. Your house heated up slower. So it wasn't that efficient, really. A modern system has got very little water in it, but the radiators are very good giving off the amount of heat that is in the water. The theory behind what I'm advising you to do in this video in, if you're going to change your radiators, fit a bigger radiator. Fit the, fit the biggest radiator you can. And that's why I'm changing four radiators currently in my house. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is this lounge one. I'm changing an old single panel, single convector for a double panel, double convector. And I've got three other radiators to change. Most of the other radiators in this house are quite modern. Now I've got a condensing boiler. And currently, at the minute, the temperature of the boiler is running too hot. And that means that within the boiler, it's too hot to condense. A condensing boiler is sold and fitted as a high efficiency boiler. And it is, it can be around about 94, 95% efficient. If the boiler's not condensing, it isn't a high efficiency boiler. It is only efficient as a standard boiler which we've been have, fitting in houses for the past 40 years. The condensing part, the, the, the combustion gases generally go into, into another chamber within the boiler. That moisture that's in the exhaust gas is condensed out and the heat taken away from it onto a coil that your central heating water is going through. If that water is too hot, the water will not condense onto it. It will just continue out with the flue gas. If your house has been correctly sized with radiators throughout it, the water in those radiators will need to be about 70 degrees. And the return temperature is still gonna be probably too hot for the boiler to condense. In fitting larger radiators, you are getting more heat from them, okay? Even if the water temperature is lower, the heat output that you get from them will be sufficient to heat that room. So by fitting larger radiators throughout your house, you can reduce the temperature of your boiler, thereby getting it to condense, thereby saving you gas. So that's the base, basics of it. So I'm gonna get on now and we're gonna change this radiator. The radiators that you have in the room where your room stat is, you don't have TRVs on. You just have plain valves, one of which is fully open, one of which is your lock shield um, that would be turned down if you balanced your system. I'm not going to go into balancing on this video. So I'm just changing this radiator and therefore I don't need to drain down. The best way to do that is to just slightly, I've got some towels down here to protect the carpet. And then the best way to do it is to just slightly slacken off the nut on your radiator, close off the valves, and then lift the radiator and lay it down. And then you lose a little bit of water, but at each end, then you unscrew the valve and then tip your radiator up, bung your thumbs over the ends, get it outside and it's job done. Drain the water out of it. You've got it out of the house. So I'm in this position here and all I've got to do, these are hand tight. There's literally a drip coming out of there, but these are hand tight. So all I've got to do is spin them off there and pick the radiator up and you won't lose much water out of it at all. I've got my old radiator off, got it outside, not spilt a drop of water, system still primed. What I did do was get a bowl and um, just put it next to these valves and I just bled a little bit out just to see really how mucky the system is. Uh, you won't be able to see in here but the water's pretty clean. I fitted a radiator a year ago at the other end of the lounge. I gave the system quite a good clean out then and I have got a the magnet in line at the boiler. It takes out the magnetite so that prevents a lot of sludge in your system. If you're going to get any sludge 
it's going to be generally in the middle bottom of a radiator and when I emptied the radiator outside just it was quite clean or you're going to get it in the pipe work downstairs you've got your radiator off take your old brackets off if you want to paint behind the wall by all means now's the best time to do it but I am fitting reflective insulation on here because this is an outside wall and although this is a well insulated cavity house you are still heating the wall behind the radiator and that heat is being conducted out and you don't really want that you're losing heat so certainly any radiators that are on external walls get some of that reflective foam or reflective bubble wrap and now's the best time to stick it behind the radiator uh, the next thing to do is to measure up to where you put your brackets these radiators are quite recommend them they're Stelrad radiators and uh, they're from Wix they've got a good warranty period with them so a lot of confidence from the company so what I did basically with these brackets is find the center point between your two valves okay so find the exact center point and then measure your brackets on your radiator find um, the point at which your brackets want to be in those lugs and then so you draw make a mark vertically there and then position the brackets on the radiator and then measure from the bottom of the bracket to the bottom of the pipe okay that that's a datum point that i find is quite good there's a little bit of movement up and down on most radiator pipes so this, you're going to get a few millimeters either way and then fit your brackets on the wall dry fit your radiator so stick your radiator on have a look check uh, get your head down can i get my valves lined up with the stubs that i'm going to put on and yes I can. The other thing not to forget is these little plastic um, things which go which fit they slide into your radiator brackets don't forget to put those on because what they do is they prevent metal to metal contact between your radiator and your bracket and a it'll stop it squeaking if anybody touches it if anybody touches the radiator it'll squeak on the brackets there'll be a little bit of movement but also when your radiator is either heating up or cooling down if it's going to make a ticking noise that's where it will come from so if you've got radiators that creak or tick when they're heating up or cooling down it's because they haven't got these little insulators on the bracket at the back so unless you want to get new ones when you take your old radiator off you need to take these parts off and so these these are the radiator tails plumbers allen key it's got the square drive on it but they are hexagon and so they're they're your radiator tails you need to take those off your old radiators clean them up, up, up clean them up they're usually made of brass stick a load of ptfe on stick them in there and then we're ready to measure our trv tails ready to connect up to the valve so i've dry fitted my components and it's just to get the right length on all the parts so that's this which has been cut down I've got the nut to go on there and the olive but what i'm going to do now i'm going to properly fit it properly fit it into the radiator with ptfe bit of jointing compound on here tighten the nut up bit of jointing compound around the olive uh, when you tighten in a, a nut up with an olive on something like this you don't need to put PTFE around this thread because that is not where you're sealing you're sealing the olive up into this taper which is inside in here so it's you just want jointing compound if you're going to put some on around there that's my parts dry fitted at this end for I fasten all this up I'm going to take this off I'm going to do the other end and then I'll fasten everything up and then it'll be time to put the uh, bleed valves there in the top of the radiator fit those in they've got o-rings in and then it'll be time to fill up now nope, job done so there we go silver foil coated foam and going on the back of the radiator i've got my fittings all tightened up so i'll just stick the radiator back on there we go that's radiator number one done uh, all i've got to do now probably go and turn the refill valves on on my boiler because this is going to take all the pressure all the water out of the system uh, so then i'll open these valves and then bleed it and then when it's built up to pressure just check for leaks see how we go so there we go i've bled the radiator so it's full of water secure to the wall i've got my uh, reflective uh, foam on the back covering about 90 percent of the radiator you can't really see it it's nice and neat 
and it's going to stop the wall soaking heat up from the radiator and because that's not really contributing to warming the room up. Just checking for leaks, everything's dry. Those tails that you can cut down are brilliant for replacing a um, imperial radiator with a metric one and certainly in these radiators you can't get a 1300 millimeter which would have probably fit between these two valves. If I'd have gone for a 1400 obviously that was beyond the dimensions between my valves so I would have had to alter pipe work so this is the easiest way to do it but this radiator's probably got getting on for three times the output of the old one and so what that's going to be able to allow me to do is reduce the temperature of my boiler so that it's condensing better so I'm going to be saving energy. So that's one radiator done I haven't had to drain down the system I've got two more to do upstairs and then a third one on my landing and what I'm doing with that one is I'm replacing the same width radiator it's the metric radiator but I'm going for 200 millimeters taller and again for the same reason ultimately I'm going to fit uh, the Hive TRV in the bedroom cause another energy saving tip is that a lot of people fit uh, TRVs don't really know what number to set them at but what you should be doing is looking at kind of sensing or knowing what the room temperature is and adjusting the TRV to suit. Although don't forget, you don't have TRVs in the same room as the room thermostat. It has to have the full output of the radiator. So that's done that for now. We'll get on with the other radiators. This is uh, the second radiator that I'm looking at changing. And there are two of these, one in each bedroom. This is an imperial radiator. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get some radiator tail extensions to screw into the new radiator and it's just basically going to fill the gap uh, basically what so what you need to do is measure the gap in metric between your radiator valves and see what the difference is to your new one okay and you can either divide it by two or just get a radiator tail extension to cover that gap and put it at one end okay so I've drained the whole system down. I've removed the old radiator from this position. And what I've done is I've marked the brackets, fixed them in place. And then I always put the screws in the slots so that you can move the bracket up and down a little bit um, because you just need to get the entry level correct for the valves, which I've done there. So what I'm doing now, I'm just dry fitting the radiator. So I've got the other end correct. And then what I've got is these extension pieces. Uh, I think these are called TRV extensions. You get an olive and a nut, and we're gonna be looking at that, that basically can fit anywhere along there. And once you tighten the nut up to the valve, obviously it'll seal the olive. But what we need to do first of all is decide how long this is gonna be because you can cut these down. So my height is correct for the radiator and the valve, so that height is correct. Um, I've got the other end dry fitted. So what I need to do now is fit that in there. Again, this is just dry fitting to make sure everything's in the right position. So that on there is looking like it's about 10 millimeters too long. I've already tested it into the valve, so I know that it goes up to that shoulder there. So what I'm gonna do, I'll put a little mark on there with a hacksaw, and then we'll take it out and I'll cut that down, and then we can assemble everything with PTFE tape and get the olive on and fit everything. You will notice that I am putting the TRV valve on, on this position, and the TRV head is gonna be fitting on that way. Personally, I think it's a better position to fit the TRV because you want this to be measuring the temperature in the room. I know that they say a lot of them ignore the temperature of the radiator when it's like that, but it, it is next to a heat source and you've also got heat coming from your valve, from these parts, so all the metal parts that are here are basically heat is going to rise from all these metal parts 
and radiate out a little bit from this side of the radiator and I think it's just much better to fit them like that and then you are getting a better sense of the air temperature in the room and at the end of the day wherever these fit you're going to be adjusting these okay to a setting that you find is suitable for the temperature that you want in the room be it four three two whatever it is and so I prefer to have mine like that to me it's sensing the temperature in the room more so once again using the double-sided um, sticky tape and the uh, foam backed foil panel on the wall and that's this is an outside wall and that's going to um, reflect the heat away from the wall it's going to stop the wall soaking up some of the heat from the radiator and it's going to reflect it back and basically you just get a little bit more convection from your radiator so that is a really good um, heat saving tip you don't want half your heat from your radiator soaking up that wall because a lot of it is going to just disappear so that radiator's fitted um, i've just tightened everything up put a little bit of uh, hawk white on the olives and uh, that one's done so that's this end uh, these are Drayton 414s. I chose these. I was going to put TRV4s, but they, they weren't in stock. And I was looking at what the difference is. Um, and basically the 414s are more or less the same. This valve's actually got a flow regulator in it. Instead of using the lock shield for balancing the radiators, you can actually use this valve and a tool like this. So there's a this tool, you actually slacken off part of the valve in here and then you turn the center part of the valve with this and there's numbers on here from one to six use the four pronged key you wouldn't do the um gray ring which is like a locking ring a quarter of a turn apparently no more and then you use the two pronged key to alter the black part of the valve in the center they're difficult to see but on there are numbers from one to six you only turn this clockwise so you can carry on going round and round. But when you're balancing the radiators, you can use that. And then when you've got the, this in the right position, one to six on the black part of the valve, you then turn this round and the gray part that you undid quarter of a turn, you just tighten that up and put that back on. Cold radiators in your house that's not getting flow to them, you need to restrict the flow to radiators that are nearer the boiler, nearer the pump. And you can do that with these valves. So this is the Drayton 414. That's finished really. I dry fitted the radiator. Um, everything was in position, everything was okay. I've put my foil on the back. So then I put a little bit of hawk white on the um, around the olive basically. You want it on, that's where it seals. It doesn't seal on the threads. So that's all fastened up. Then I slowly refilled the system and with a torch, a bright torch, just check for leaks, everything was okay. So I did the two bedroom radiators. I've done this one here. And uh, although this was a modern radiator, it was, um, I think it was 500 by 400 or 500. So it was 500 by 500, I think. And I've replaced that with a 700. It was only like 30 quid. And the reason that I've done that is because this this house has got open plan stairs in the lounge and previous houses that I've had that are the same layout as this. In the winter, when you've got the heating on, the heat comes up here from the lounge. You end up with like a layer then of cold air that drops down the stairs. And what I've found in this house, with this radiator at the top of the stairs, you don't get that cold air dropping down the stairs. It does make an immense difference. In the whole scheme of this uh, project that I've done is to increase the output of the radiators and thereby reducing the uh, boiler temperature, which I have done. I mean, all these radiators are red hot and it's running at 60 degrees and I could probably reduce the boiler to maybe 55. So certainly the, re the uh, return temperature, um, the boiler should be condensing. That's probably a little bit of a long-winded long -winded video um, and I, I didn't include all the plumbing work that I did because it would have been even longer. But I've covered quite a lot of ground and I hope that it's probably helped you. So, you know, here was, here was the objective of the project. I needed to change some old radiators that weren't very good at convecting. They had a lot of water in them. I needed to insulate the walls 
that the radiator was next to so that the radiator is not soaking heat into the wall, especially an outside wall. I needed to reduce the temperature of my boiler so that it's condensing properly to save energy. So I hope you found this useful and the main aim of this video has been to show you what the project has been in my house with the advent of gas increasing if you can make heating your house more efficient and use less gas it's got to be a bonus and over the period of a year you will reap the benefits and for not a lot of outlay radiators are not really that expensive what I've shown you in changing radiators and that don't be scared of it it's not difficult it really isn't difficult I've done all the things that I talked to you about I've even replaced a couple of hinges on some UPVC windows the things that I've done in this video if you're reasonably good at most DIY tasks you'll be able to uh, sort out changing a radiator it's it's really not that difficult it's just a it's just a case of measuring and getting the right radiator to fit but if you're replacing you know a metric radiator with another metric radiator that is so easy you don't even have to drain down the outcome to any project that you might attempt is is that you know you're more in control of your home and your heating system and what it's actually doing i do know that there are a lot of people that move into a house or they've got a house and the heating system it, they're not really in control of it they don't really know what it's doing as long as the radiators are getting hot you need to know what your heating system is doing for you and, and, and control the the temperature in the different rooms and what those u rooms are used for one thing i've not really covered a lot in this video is room thermostats but if you've still got the old analog style room stat you really need to get rid of that when we talk about the range of a thermostat that is the range between when it switches on and off and the old analog bimetallic strip therm thermostat were very inefficient at best they had about a two two and a half degree range so that's the range between when they switch off and on and ideally that's if you've got a three wire system so the bimetallic strip has got a heater on it basically so when it, when it switches off it is then heated to bring it back on and so it reduces the range between which the heating comes on and off. The hive system that I've got in my home, uh, you can look at trend graphs for that and you can see the temperature at which it controls the house. And um, I'll put a picture of my latest trend graph up. Uh, the hive system learns how your home heats and cools. So it predicts when it puts the boiler on, it can predict when it needs to shut it off so it doesn't overshoot. Here's a trend graph. My heating system is controlling the house to within probably less than 0.4 of a degree. And you you know, that's pretty good. You can't expect for much better than that. And you can see the blue dashes on there. And that's the number of times that the boiler is firing during the day. And it's quite a small amount. And the other good thing about that is when the, bo when the boiler is firing, I know now that my boiler is condensing more or less all the time so I'm getting the maximum efficiency from my boiler okay so I hope this video has been helpful to you and appreciate any comments you might make if you need to know any information or if I've missed something or you misunderstand something please let me know and I'll try and rectify that but I, I hope that um, you've understood everything that I've done and that you can probably apply some of the methods I've spoke about in your home. And the idea is to help you reduce your bills.